Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey everybody, Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. I'm here with JC, my co-host. Such a pleasure to be back. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for coming back. I couldn't do this without you. Today, we have an awesome topic. We are gonna be talking about volunteerism to improve employee engagement. And we have an amazing uh, host or uh, uh, attendee today, Penny Cedar. CEO of Habitat for Humanity of Seminole Apopka, which is in Central Florida, in case you don't know where that is. Hey, Penny. Hi, thanks for having me today. Yeah, thanks for being a guest. I I truly appreciate it. I want to kind of just jump right in. And, you know, most of our attendees are HR professionals or professionals that are forced to wear the HR hat because they don't have HR. And you know me, I'm a huge fan of volunteerism and even a bigger fan of Habitat for Humanity across the world. I just thought this was a perfect opportunity to really talk about how companies can start a volunteering program and help to improve employee engagement, which keeps them at the jo- at the job instead of quitting and leaving and going somewhere else. So, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think um, having volunteer opportunities for employees uh, is key to building teamwork. Um, I, I think that, uh, especially younger people and not just younger people, but especially younger people are looking for opportunities to give back to their community and they feel better when they're working for an organization that shares those values and has vetted volunteer opportunities and offers them to, uh, to the entire staff, um, and actually, you know, does the work to, to vet the organizations and maybe even come up with a schedule. But um, I do think it's something that people are really are re- really yearning for in big corporations. And it's a great way to get to know, uh, you know, the person that works down the hall from you or the big boss or uh, somebody who's, you know, you just wouldn't get a chance to meet. So there's so many great opportunities with volunteerism. And, um, and I do think people are looking for ways to give back. Yeah, absolutely. A very interesting and recent study conducted by PwC states that employees most committed to their organizations put in 57% more effort on the job. And they're 87% less likely to resign than employees who consider themselves disengaged. And when we think about keeping employees engaged through volunteerism, the possibility of volunteerism as a benefit, it's a it's a mind shift for some people in the C-suite, wouldn't you say? Yeah, unfortunately, I think it, pro- it probably is. Um, but I think it's really important uh, for organizations to be thinking about how do they give back to their to their local community, uh, how do they engage their employees in meaningful ways? Uh, and uh, and I can tell you, you know, there are a lot of great volunteer opportunities and great organizations to give back to. But uh, Habitat, of course, coming out and swinging a hammer can really do some great team building for for a group. And I think if you're in the C-suite and you care about your people, um, creating and having opportunities available to them. Uh, to to their employees, uh, very important. Yeah, and, and I like to say, you know, hopefully you're in the C-suite and you care about your people. But even if you don't care <laughs> about your people, you do care about the bottom line. And you know that's that study that JC referenced: uh, 87 percent le- less likely to resign if they are committed to their organizations, which volunteerism could help with. So it's funny. We pay people, and so we'll talk about the paid part of volunteerism in in a moment, but if we go ahead and pay people to leave the organization and volunteer for the day or a couple days, they're more likely to stay with the company. Isn't that ironic? You know, again, I think it makes a lot of sense that, that, uh, you know, you give folks the day off, so to speak, or you pay them to go volunteer, 
um, shows shows that commitment, a, a larger commitment to humanity. So if you care about your community, then they then then I think there's that um, natural tendency to think, well, then they care about me too, and so right. this is really great. Yeah, I'll stay. That's fantastic. Right, exactly. And you can learn if you're volunteering with Habitat, you can learn things for your own house. That's where I learned sure. a lot of my skills. To, I've, uh, you know, learned how to put on a roof, put in in uh, siding, what? put in, uh, you know, uh, interior walls. You name it. Oh, that's it's cool. It. It's it's awesome. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the summer, it's a little tough, especially in Florida, right, where it's hot. But it's uh, it's just an amazing experience. Through no the no through doubt. the volunteering opportunities, uh, but when you're in the workplace outside of the C-suite, if we're down on the the floor level, we're talking a, a managerial perspective. There could be challenges uh, between leaders, different bosses at different levels, and their employees. You put them into a different atmosphere. You move them outside of the office. Get into this environment where you're volunteering, giving back to the community, possibly building a roof for Wendy Sellers. And the next thing you know, you you've got camaraderie that's overflowing. You you start to r- shift that paradigm in relationships in a way. Do you see an evolution between people when they come to volunteer and and where they wind up at the end of that journey versus where they began? I definitely do. I mean, again, you know, you're you're talking about, you know, whether you're uh, C-suite level or your middle management or your, your clerical staff or whatever the case may be, pretty much everybody comes to the job site with, uh, you know, and I think probably Wendy can attest to this, with no real skill in construction. Uh, so everybody has to work together and they have to work together in a way that can be kind of vulnerable. Uh, but fun at the same time. And so, um, yeah, you can see bonds and and uh, connections happen in a way that wasn't going to happen in the office uh, in that stratified, you know, kind of kind of work environment. Yeah, you really do. And you are there with no downtime because Habitat wants you or any uh, volunteer organization wants you to be there and be productive. So you're there with no downtime. And the great part about it is you're working alongside your coworkers, if it's a company sanctioned event, and you're forced to not talk about work. You're forced to, you know, really figure out how am I putting this roof on and how am I gonna communicate and how am I gonna work together? And I think that's how you break down barriers at work too, because it could be awkward um, at work talking to an executive where now when you're standing next to them in jeans and work boots on a Friday or Saturday, you're talking about, Hey, can you hand, give me that hammer? Um, you know, yeah. it's a much, it's a much different aspect. And I, I love also from that same study that JC uh, quoted earlier, PWC study is, you know, people that are communicating better and working better, the company sees, what was it, 20, 22 or 21% increase in revenue. That's huge, huge, huge. And hopefully could, they could use some of that revenue to turn around and make a donation, right, Penny? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Even half of that, right? But um, yeah, no, we, we love it. And I don't know that it matters, you know, what you're doing for the volunteer project. You know, it could be working in a soup kitchen. When I, but again, you get a group of people that have got to get into a groove working together and they've got to, like you said, communicate and they've got to kind of figure out people's strengths and weaknesses pretty quickly um, and likes and dislikes. And that's all really transferable kinds of information and um, knowledge that goes from, you know, again, whether it's a job site or a soup kitchen or whatever it is people are doing, it's transferable into the workplace. Thinking about the bigger perspective of volunteerism as a company benefit, one of the things that uh, Wendy was able to source before today's program was some information about the Volunteer Protection Act of 1997. And that generally protects volunteers for the liability and the performance of their volunteer work. So if the volunteer performs services for a not-for-profit organization or government entity and either receives no compensation, although reasonable reimbursement for expenses incurred is allowed, or does not receive anything of value in lieu of compensation in excess of $500 a year, certain protections are in place. With that aside, 
What about stipends for volunteerism? Is there such an incentive out there? Yeah, Penny, what are you seeing um, maybe in your organization? And I know you're part of the national um, habitat as well. It, how many companies, you know, just vaguely speaking, or if you have statistics, that'd be great too. How many companies are paying for that time off for volunteerism? You know, it is usually how many, I don't have statistics, but um, what I would say is that it, it usually comes from larger corporations like, like a Verizon or Deloitte and Touche or, you know, a, um, uh, a larger comp a larger company that has the uh, or Lockheed Martin you know something like that they've got the deep pockets to do that and it's very much a part of their culture um, so but in terms of numbers you know I, I would say uh, you know we don't have a lot of those big fortune 500 companies here where where we live but I would say um, maybe 30% of our volunteer groups fall into that category where they're being um, compensated for coming out and, you know, in, in other words, getting paid uh, a, their regular salary or their regular hourly rate, whichever the case may be, mm -hmm. to come and, and, and really, um, you know, work that day. So instead of sitting you know, with their computer or answering phones or whatever, they're going to come swing a hammer and they still get paid. So I'd say that's probably 25% of our, our groups that come out. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point about, uh, about, uh, large companies versus small companies. Let's talk about some statistics about Habitat and about other nonprofits when we come back in one moment. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.